Ave Maria. This is Father Isaac Mary Rallier from the Fatima Center, where we will begin with a prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Remember, O most compassionate Virgin Mary, never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, we fly unto thee, O Virgin of Virgins, our Mother. To thee we come, before thee we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother, the Word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in thy mercy hear and answer. Our Lady of Fatima, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Francis, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. Since we posted the video, uh, the talk I gave on the coronavirus uh, last week, it was Friday, it didn't get up to Saturday morning, there's been many questions that are coming into the Fatima Center. So I'd like to answer some of the questions today. Uh, one of the questions pertain to holy water. Uh, can I bless holy water over uh, the video of a tape like this, and the answer is no. I can't do it over a telephone either. So you have to go to a Catholic priest to have holy water blessed. And go, I know a lot of the priests, they're shutting down right now. They're not having public masses. But go to the rectory, bring some three, four, five gallons of water, bring some salt, and hopefully they'll use the old ritual too and have them bless it. Another question about holy water is people say, if you have, say, uh, a quart of holy water, can you add to that and make it two quarts? And the answer is, you can add to holy water. I don't really like to do it myself, but say you have 30 ounces of holy water, you could add only half of that. So you'd be able to add another 15 ounces and not above that and it would still be holy water, but I think you're better off trying to get it made. Another question that's coming in is about blessed candles. Do the candles have to be bee wax when it, uh, made from bee wax to be blessed? And there's been debates about that, uh, and basically I would say you could bless, any, as long as it's a candle with wax and uh, some things are not made of wax, but it seems that they, the blessing still takes with, with just about any candle. Uh, a big question, too, is about being anointed, the anointing of the sick. If you feel that you're really in bad shape or you may be dying, if you're rushed to the hospital now, Unfortunately, once you're in the hospital, they will not let a Catholic priest come into the hospital to anoint you. And the anointing of the sick is such a very important sacrament because uh, it's the most important time in your whole life is when you make that final crossing into eternity. Because if you're not in sanctifying grace and you're a mortal sin, you can lose your soul. And so I always recommend that every day you pray three Hail Marys to the Blessed Virgin Mary to be anointed when your, the time of your death comes, that you will not also receive uh, the apostolic blessing and Holy Viaticum, which will be your last Holy Communion. And that strengthens you to make the final crossing. Like I said, I've been at the deathbed of many people and many times even good, pious people that lived a good, holy life, sometimes the devil comes and attacks at that moment because if the devil can get you to sin on your deathbed, he can own you for eternity. And so the anointing is very important because it strengthens you. And many times when you go to, a priest goes to the deathbed of a person, they could be uh, very... Uh, screaming, yelling, all kinds of things can happen. But once you anoint them, usually peace comes and things calm down. So what? It, so the thing is, if you're in danger of death right now and you're on your way to the hospital, you try to get the priest to anoint you before you enter the hospital because you may not come out alive. And that leads to another question. What do you do if you're in mortal sin and you know that you're dying? 
And there's no priest to anoint you. There's no priest to absolve you of your sins. Can you still, is it possible for you to go to heaven? And the church teaches, yes, it's possible. You would have to make what we call a perfect act of love or perf perfect act of contrition. And everybody thinks that that's so easy, but it's really not because there is a formula that you're taught. Years ago, we were taught it when we made our first communion, and we, and we recite that when we, after the priest absolves us and we're saying our act of contrition, it's a perfect act of contrition, but it's not enough to receive the graces for a perfect act of contrition because you have to have a proper disposition. And in order to, for, to have a perfect act of contrition, you have to be detached from all sin, not only mortal sin, but venial sin also. And so this is a very difficult thing to do, especially if you've been living a life of sin. And so many people say, well, I'll wait till my, on my deathbed, I'll convert. Father will come and absolve me. Well, don't count on that. And so if you're in a position like this, you have to make a perfect act of love and you have to beg God for the grace to make that perfect act of love where you are not detached from any sin, and you, you can't have a fear of even going to hell. It has to be a fear that you don't want to offend God because you love him like his son loves, loves him. And that is a very, it's a great miracle the saints do. St. Alphonse of the doctor of the church, tells us that the greatest gift, of course, that God gives us is our free will. And he says, if you're on your deathbed and you're dying, he says that if you accept your death, you know you're dying. If you accept your death, it's a perfect act of love because you're surrendering your will to God and you're accepting this death. And he goes, if you die like that, when you make a perfect act of love, it not only forgives your mortal sins and genius sins, it does away with all temporal punishment. And so... We should pray for these things. We should try to make perfect acts of love every day of our life. We should be striving to be detached, not only from mortal sin, but all venial sins. And deliberate venial sin is really, really evil. And so many people say, well, I'm not committing a mortal sin. I'm not being separated from God. But it's a very bad habit to get in. If you're not fighting your venial sins, if you're not trying to uproot your venial sins, Eventually, St. Teresa of Avila says, one day you will commit a grave sin and you won't repent uh, right away. So these are some of the questions I want to answer today. And if I recommend that, uh, that you please go to the Fatima website. It's Fatima.org. And on the Fatima website, there are many, many videos from our conferences, many issues that we address, and many updates. Please bow your head for God's blessing. Pax et benedictio Deo omnipotente, Patri et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen.